Okay, perfect. So welcome to today's Altmetric Book Club webinar, which is about using Altmetrics to understand the impacts of books. Thank you all for registering. We've had a lot of interest and we hope that the session uh, will prove beneficial for you all. A little bit of housekeeping before we properly get into things. If you have any questions through the session, please just put them in the question box. You should be able to see that on your GoToWebinar control panel. Let us know if you can't hear or see. We'll do what we can to fix that for you or help you fix that. And this session is being recorded and we'll make the slides available afterwards. So if you need to step away for any reason, don't worry, we'll make those materials available. On the call today, you have me. Hi, again, I'm Kat. Uh, I'm the COO here at Altmetric, based in London, and speaking to you from my sunny spare room. Uh, we also have on the call Professor Mike Thelwall. Mike is a professor of data science at the University of Wolverhampton. Mike has authored a book and over 100, impressively, journal articles on the use of alternative indicators. So he's a real expert in this space. Uh, and also an expert is Mike Taylor, who is the head of metrics development at Digital Science. And he'll be joining us towards the end of the webinar um, to talk about some of his recent work in the book space. So what we'll cover today, I'm going to start with a short introduction to Altmetric for Books for some of you who are perhaps a little bit less familiar. Then we'll move on to Mike Thelwall's presentation entitled Altmetric for Books, Some Empir Empirical Investigations. And Mike's talk will be based on some of the research that he's been doing in this area. Then Mike Taylor will talk us through the work he's been doing and, and looking in particular, in particular at how books metadata could be useful. And then at the end, we'll move on to the Q&A. So please do pop any questions as you have them uh, in the questions box as we go through the session. And with that, I'm just going to check if any had any issues. No, I think we're good to go. I'm sorry, as I seem to have developed a bit of a sore throat today. Not coronavirus, hopefully. So, Altmetrics for books. Uh, what are altmetrics? Many of you are probably familiar with things like citations and download counts and more traditional bibliometrics. Altmetrics, for anyone who is not yet familiar, are indicators of online engagement that are really designed to complement those more traditional citation impact metrics in particular. Altmetrics pull data from a huge range of online sources, and on this slide you can see just a sample. So, for example, they encompass discussions on peer review platforms, commentary on Wikipedia, commentary on social media, coverage, so mentions perhaps in the mainstream media or blogs, citations in non-journal sources for the most part, so policy documents, Wikipedia, other online forums where people are sharing work. But actually for Altmetric, we also pull in citation data from dimensions, so you can see how the two compare. Uh, and then some other platforms as well, including engagement on scholarly platforms. And not actually mentioned here, we often also pull in references from patents for books and other types of research outputs. And what's perhaps particularly exciting about Altmetrics is that where citations are really designed for journal to journal citations, with Altmetrics you can start to capture this wider engagement for any sort of research output. So that might be an article, a data set, a clinical trial, or indeed a book or a book chapter. So it gives a huge uh, range of possibilities for what we can now understand about how those alternative research outputs are being used and what influence they are having. And Altmetrics really make the perfect complement to traditional books data. So many of you on this call will likely be used to working with very established book metrics, whether those are website traffic, uh, sales figures, citations, or perhaps even manually searching Twitter looking for mentions of the books that you've published. What we hear from a lot of the publishers that we talk to is that this is a very manual process. Uh, it tends to be a bit ad hoc. They don't feel like they're very good at it. Um, they're, not, they're not sure there's much consistency across the tracking that they're doing. And if you talk to experts from the kind of research evaluation and metrics and scholarly commu communication space, they would really recommend using a variety of data to understand how your publications are being received, interpreted, and influencing wider society. And that's where all metrics come in. They can really help you get a better understanding of the big picture of book impact. A brief history of Altmetric, the company's experience with books. Uh, in 2012 is when um, we first started making data available for journal articles. 
And at the same time, we were also tracking attention to data sets and a very small number of books. In kind of 2013-2014, we focused on curating our sources list, so adding to our news, blog and policy tracking and enhancing the output types that we tracked. So, for example, in this period, we added tracking for clinical trials. In 2015, we worked on a project with Springer Nature called Book Metrics. Uh, this was a custom project just for them that enabled them to display online attention alongside downloads and reviews and other things for Springer books. In 2016, we built on what we learned from that project and launched Altmetric for books. So this enabled us to make Altmetric badges for books, much like you see the badges for journal articles, more widely available to other publishers. And they first went on Routledge Handbooks Online and they're now used by several leading academic publishers around the world. And then following that, we also added to our Altmetric Explorer platform with the launch of the Altmetric Book Index. And what that means is that you can go into the Explorer and browse the online attention for your own books, uh, but also that of many other publishers. And you can explore things like mentions over time. You can see who is talking about your books the most. You can create shareable reports. You can export the data. It really gives you a good insight into how your books are being received and how that compares to others in the same subject area. And why is all of this important? Well, of course, especially in today's uh, online research world, authors are facing a kind of new and unique set of challenges. They really want to increasingly understand what influence their book has had, partly so that they can just know for themselves, but also so that they can really see the return on the time that goes into publishing those books or those chapters, and then demonstrate that to people who are looking to hire them or fund them, um, or even amongst colleagues. They also want to, of course, improve their writing style, some of them at least, um, and to understand what other work in their field is really getting traction. If they're looking proactively to publish a book or a chapter, then they might be thinking about which publisher they should work with and which of those uh, available will perhaps get the most attention for their book or make it the most visible, all of which, of course, will hopefully support their career growth. And at the same time, they might be thinking about who to work with. So finding potential co-authors that they haven't already come across in their day-to-day -day work or at conferences is a particular challenge for them and can often be difficult. And as readers themselves, they're probably going to need a hand prioritising what to read, given the huge amount of information that is out there. So the more context they can gather around what a title is about, what its influence has been in the scholarly community and beyond, will help inform that decision. And how can Altmetrics for Books help publishers? Well, they can help you, as well as your authors, understand where and how your books and chapters are being discussed online. They can make it much easier to report back to authors or to series editors. Instead of having to wait months or years for citations to accrue and then gather all of that data manually, with Altmetrics, you can see all of that at the click of a button. They also enable you to refine the approach and measure the outcomes of commissioning efforts, marketing and press activity. So you can really build a more concrete strategy and then use Altmetrics as a measure of what has worked and what hasn't. Because Altmetrics have that immediacy and pull from so many different sources, they're also really useful for finding emerging topics and authors for future development. So you might want to look at which journal articles or which research areas are being blogged about a lot at the moment and see when in the timeline it might make sense to consider launching a book on the topic um, and whether there are authors who you were perhaps previously unaware of who might make excellent contributors to those titles. And of course, they can help you evidence the potential of publishing with you to those prospective authors. So in an increasingly online uh, OA world, authors have more choice than ever of who to publish with. So you want to be at the front demonstrating that you're there to support them and provide the best publishing uh, and return on investment that they could get. And many of the publishers that we work with, particularly the society or the university presses amongst you, have a big commitment to furthering uh, knowledge in specific disciplines. And by using and adding altmetric data to your titles, you can really demonstrate that your commitment is there to disseminating that work and making it available to wider audiences. So with that, I will hand over to Mike. Uh, let me make you the presenter, Mike.
So you should now have the option to share your screen. Okay, thanks very much, Kat. Uh, thanks very much, and thanks very much for inviting me to. Um, so I'm going to try and give uh, a research perspective on art metrics for books, but also talk about things that are more generally useful to uh, publishers and researchers uh, who write books. So I'll try and draw out lessons from the research perspective that uh, have a, a, a wider usefulness. So I'll try and mention everything that I think is relevant. And some of these things are probably second nature to you. And some of these things you probably know a lot better than I do. So I'd like to apologize for that right at the start. But I'm trying to be uh, as comprehensive as possible. OK, so just to illustrate uh, what a altmetric for books looks like. So this is a, a web page for a book. And I have the altmetric widget installed on my computer. And I can click the altmetric widget, and then it tells me uh, the altmetric score for my publication. So if you're interested in the altmetrics for a book, an individual book, it's quite easy to access it. And you can compare it for a few different books to see what kind of social media attention you're getting. So this is one of my books. This doesn't have very high social media attention, I'm afraid. So it's um, just uh, 12, tweet, uh, uh, 12 tweets for this one. So as Kat has mentioned, uh, an important issue is why should we be interested in altmetrics for books? And I think one of the most important reasons is that they give you early insights into attention for your book publications. So before you get the sales data, you can get uh, data from social media, from Twitter, uh, for example, um, which will tell you if your books are attracting early attention. So you can get information about the, the likely future sales and the general interest. So the interest might be useful feedback on your marketing campaigns, for example. So if you think you've had a, a successful marketing campaign, you can check that by counting the Twitter mentions for the books that were marketed, for example. And you can also do this for your competitors to see what's working for them. So with the sales, you have your own sales, but you probably don't have sales from uh, other publishers' books. But you can get alt metrics about them if you're nosy and you want to see uh, what if what they're doing is working. OK, and I've mentioned that your social media marketing initiatives, you can assess with the use of the social media alt metrics, such as tweet counts, Facebook wall post counts. And maybe you have other reasons why you want to use alt metrics for your book collection. So maybe you can come back with questions later. So what are the alternatives to alt metrics? If you want the kind of information that's given by alt metrics, what are the alternatives? So I guess for most people, sales are the ultimate. For books, uh, maybe even for researchers, I'm not sure how many copies of your, your book is sold. But this information is not really available very early. And it's not available about competitors. And it's not available early enough to tell you about your marketing campaigns. So it's really the delay with sales and the lack of comparable data for sales that's uh, unhelpful in some contexts. So downloads, again, could be uh, very useful. Um, but you don't have this information about competitors' books or books that you think are similar to the book that you're investigating. And it doesn't tell you directly about the success of uh, campaigns. And also, uh, downloads, as you know, will mix with sales. So some people will buy the print copy, some people will buy the download copy, and uh, other people will license possibly the, the ability to download book content. So it can be quite difficult to track who's actually read a book or who's downloaded a book. And citations from an academic perspective, these are often used for the evaluation of the impact of research. 
but they're particularly slow to accumulate for books. So uh, the citations are already slow for journal articles. You, you normally have to wait two or three years to know how well your journal article is cited. And for books, there's more like four or five years to wait to see uh, how often they're cited. And it's just because uh, citations to books are just much slower to appear in uh, other books and in journal articles. They're just, in most cases, they're just a slower moving source. So another issue, from a, particularly from a research pe perspective, is that different books have different types of impact. So the types of impacts are not comparable between different books. And I think it's much more so than for journal articles. Journal articles are more or less uniform in the sense that they try to add knowledge to the academic domain. But books are more varied in uh, style and uh, in the type of impact that they might have. So for example, most comparable to the journal article, a book might try to add scientific knowledge. So it might be a scholarly monograph that uh, reports a new body of uh, academic research. But there are other types of books as well. So if it's an arts and humanities book, then it's not really scientific knowledge, but it might be producing uh, output of culture from the research of the academic. So it's a different type of thing, really. And then, of course, we have textbooks, which are, are very unlike journal articles. They summarize academic research uh, and other knowledge and try and put it in a, an ed educational framework. And then academic related books might be professional advice. So it's not really research, but it's summarizing evidence that's close to research, but it's not education. It's not put in an educational context. It's aimed more at the professional. And then there are other books written by academics that uh, have very uh, other types of impact. So popular science books, popular health books, advice about relationships based on academic research. So books based at a, at a much wider audience, aimed at a much wider audience. So books can have different types of audience, different types of uh, impact that they aim for. So traditional book impact indicators would uh, uh, reflect just academic type impacts, mainly the scientific type impact. So citations from journal articles, you could count these from the Web of Science or Scopus, for example. So they would re represent mainly scholarly impact and not, none of the other types of impact. So educational impact wouldn't be reflected here, for example, from the, from the textbooks. So if you want to assess uh, citations to books, then you can do that with uh, the book citation index from the Web of Science and the, the uh, the books are indexed in Scopus, but they don't have a, a high coverage of books. So both of these have a relatively low coverage of uh, academic books. So if you're lucky, they cover your books. If you're not lucky, most all of your books won't be in there. So they won't tell you the citation counts. Okay, so, and if you can find them, then it's just academic impact that the citation counts reflect. So alternative impact indicators for books. So there are quite a lot. Um, so I'll go through a few of them. So one of the types of impact indicator for books is a library holding. So how many libraries hold a copy of a book as an indicator of overall popularity? So I expect these are slow to accumulate because the, the library needs to buy the book and then the evidence needs to be recorded that, um, but it could be uh, a useful type of impact indicator. So you can get this information from WorldCat. You can enter a book and uh, a postcode and it'll tell you which is the, the library nearest to you that has a copy of the book and it'll give you other information about the library. And um, they have an, an API for, for mass use, but they uh, you need to ask for permission. So here's an example of a, a WorldCat record um, for uh, the book Knowledge Machines. And you can see 
that uh, the record says at the bottom left hand corner of the screen that there are 177 libraries holding a copy for up to 10 editions of this book. So it gives you some evidence of uh, uh, uptake. So another source of information about books is Google Books. So I'm sure you're all familiar with Google Books and you might know that it doesn't have a way of counting citations, but there are clever ways you can get around that and calculate citations to books from books using the Google Books service. So uh, it needs a computer program to carry this out, but it is possible to, to get citations from books. So citations from books to books are the most natural type of book citation rather than citation from journal articles to books. But citations from books still probably just represent academic impact. And uh, the problem with Google Books is it just it's very time consuming to get the citations, the Google Books citations. It's possible, but it's just slow and time consuming. And at the end of the day, you're still getting a type of academic impact. So it's probably not a practical tool at the moment. Um, so another type of Altmetric, uh, so uh, one of the first uh, proper altmetrics is uh, the Mendeley reader count. So the number of people who use the, the um, uh, social reference sharing site Mendeley and have recorded a copy of the book in their personal library, that's known as the Mendeley reader count. So most people use the site to uh, store information on books that they've either read or intend to read. So it's a, it's a type of readership information. So, so why do you use social reference sharing sites? I think like one in 12 academics used it in the last survey. So the first studies that uh, we did of Mendeley uh, found that there were very few books in it, but that has subsequently changed. So we found in the first study, only 7% of books in the book citation index were, in, were registered in Mendeley. Uh, but if a book is in Mendeley, then it can give you a little bit of extra information about who is reading the book in terms of where they are and what kind of professional status. So this is a screenshot from uh, altmetric.com giving uh, a, a, a nice little map of where the readers of this book are. And also the disciplines they come from and the professional status. So a bit of extra readership information it's quite handy and um, so subsequently a uh, study by uh, another researcher has found that the springer books are widely uh, do widely have uh, mendeley readers so a high percentage of springer books have mendeley readers so the situation has changed since since Kevin Kusha and I did a, a study and uh, now Mendeley has a much wider coverage of books. But it does vary by discipline, but high percentages in all disciplines. So Mendeley, um, uh, so uh, Mendeley is one of the highest and for other social media sources for Springer books as well, also from the, this uh, uh, paper, uh, uh, a much lower, so a, a much lower percentage of books are mentioned in the other sources. So Twitter, uh, Twitter is one of the main, and uh, Mendeley and the others have much uh, a much rarer. Okay, so another type of indicator. Another type of indicator that can be used is the syllabus mention for books. So this counts the number of academic syllabuses from educational courses that include a book. So one indicator of how useful an, an educationally oriented book is, is the number of times it's been recommended to students in an academic syllabus. So um, so there are two ways you can get this data. So I'll go through the way that I've used first with the uh, cave and Kusha, and then I'll mention the way that Altmetric does it, which is better than the way do it, 
that, that we do it, in fact. So the way we do it is we search Google for the title of the book um, and we add the word syllabus into the search and we do a few other things to make sure that the results are academic syllabuses. So we essentially we're searching the web for documents that are a syllabus type of document and they include the title of a book. And in that way, we can have an estimate of how many um, courses have a public online syllabus that mentions a book. So uh, altmetric.com, they use, so altmetric use the open syllabus project. And uh, that means, uh, so the open syllabus project records lots of different academic syllabuses that don't have to be on the public web. And, um, extract the, the books that are mentioned from those. So this gives you direct evidence of educational impact. Being mentioned in the syllabus is evidence of educational impact for a book. So um, I'll just report a, a study using Spanish books, analyzing Spanish books, Spanish language books in syllabi. So this study from uh, Amalia Masbleda um, analyzed 15,000 Spanish language books published by Spanish publishers in the social sciences and humanities fields. And she found that uh, almost 20% of them were mentioned at least once in an online syllabus. So almost 20% of the books had been used in a course that had been, that had published its syllabus online. So the Real percentage is probably higher, but I, that was a surprisingly high percentage for me. And if you looked at the books that were most often recommended in the syllabus, you could see the type of books that were particularly useful in education. And they were, in this case, they were mostly single authored humanities monographs that were originally written in Spanish rather than that had been translated into Spanish from a, a, another language. So you can see from this the, the types of books that are most interesting or most useful in education uh, in this context. Okay, so another study of book-like things, uh, doctoral dissertations from uh, Kayvan Kusha. So Kayvan looked at 150,000 UK doctoral theses and found that uh, there was uh, very little evidence that these had uh, generated uh, interest. So less than one in eight UK doctoral dissertations had a scope of citation and even fewer had uh, a Mendeley reader. So we didn't find much evidence of, of use for doctoral dissertations. Uh, a little bit more in social science than science, but still very low uptake. So a different type of indicator is the Wikipedia citation count. So this is another one from uh, Kayvan Kusha. So he found out that books are cited more than journal articles in Wikipedia. So if you read a Wikipedia page, you'll find somewhere near the bottom of a page of the page, a list of references of work cited in Wikipedia. And often these are academic books or journal articles, uh, more often books. And these are used to support the evidence given in the page. So they're evidence, you could say, of transferring academic knowledge into a more general domain. So from academia to encyclopedia to the public, that's the, the idea behind this. So it's a useful extra indicator. So interest in academic related things uh, from a non-academic audience, perhaps. So you can search for this in Google. You can put together uh, the, the title of the book or the title of the journal article and put site colon wikipedia.org at the end of your search and it'll, it'll produce a list of pages in Wikipedia that mention your book, if there are any. And altmetric.com track this, so it's one of the standard altmetrics. So if your book has a citations in Wikipedia, you'll see that in the Altmetric uh, badge. Um, so for example, uh, here's a, a, a book 
with an old metric score of four, and you can see that it's been referenced in two Wikipedia pages. And if we click through to the, the, the tab that tells you which Wikipedia pages, you can see why it's been cited. In this case, it's once in a page about the author and once in a page about the topic of the book. So it's useful to be able to see exactly why the, the book has been cited. So you can, especially if you've written a book, and then you can see the context. So uh, Wikipedia citations to books are, I guess, reasonably common. So most books aren't cited in, in Wikipedia, but a high percentage, a high minority, large minority do have at least one citation in Wikipedia. So it's a surprisingly useful source, I think, for book impact assessment. So typically the numbers of citations you get from Wikipedia are not high, but uh, they are, uh, they are uh, common enough to be useful. Okay, so I'd just like to go through some important issues to think about when comparing books uh, with altmetrics. Um, just as a, a few uh, general common sense advice really so if you if you want to compare the the scores for between books or between sets of books then just a, a general piece of advice the books should be from the same year to avoid giving the older books an unfair advantage uh, the books should be from the same field to to avoid giving an advantage to books in fields with bigger audiences so if you have a, one book on Shakespeare and one on early Norse, then the Shakespeare book's always going to have a, a wider audience, I would have thought. And also the same type. So it wouldn't be fair to compare textbooks against monographs because the textbooks you would expect to have a much bigger audience. And some tricky issues for book evaluation as well. So it's harder in practice to evaluate books because of um, just technical issues like for one book there can be multiple versions with different ISBNs so or paperback or a hardback version um, if it's an older book there might be multiple issue, issues uh, editions with the same title so version one edition one edition two edition three and you have to decide whether you want to record them separately or together and some of the um, indicators might mix the, the different versions together so um so you do have to be put extra care into book-based evaluations for those reasons so i've just uh, put up the slide showing how altmetric decides which books it tracks so um so this is something that you might think is important to know whether your books are in there and if they're not, why they're not in there. So uh, uh, Kat and maybe Mike can tell me if this has been updated uh, to, uh, to, ch to be changed at all in any way. But um, uh, these are the criteria from Altmetric. So it must be on a publisher domain that Altmetric knows about and it must have a, an ISBN and good metadata uh, and then it needs to be mentioned in something that they track. So maybe uh, Twitter, for example, so I can pick it up. OK, so to summarize, uh, book impact evaluation is complex because of the multiple audience sizes and types, as I mentioned at the start. Uh, Mendeley readers are good for fast evidence of educational impact. Uh, syllabus mentions are good for um, educational impact, specifically educational impact, whereas Mendeley readers give you academic and educational impact. Syllabus mentions give you educational impact. Uh, other altmetrics might tell you more about the attention, just the general attention that the books have got, like the, the tweet count. And then it's important to also say that quantitative indicators, the count indicators, are always limited in scope. They always have biases. For example, if you look at the tweets, then you're ignoring the people that don't tweet, countries that don't tweet, like China. So um, you, 
you shouldn't ever treat the quantitative indicators as the scores as the truth. But they're a useful starting point for discussions about the impact of your books and then maybe time for common sense. Okay, so I hope that's given some uh, useful pointers to book-based evaluation with art metrics. Okay. Thanks very much, Mike. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, you got it just about right on the tracking. I'll, I'll go over that at the end because you've had a couple of questions. Um, I think your last two points there about the quantitative indicators don't tell the whole story and, and they can act as a useful starting point for those indicators of attention. Um, it's a really important thing for, for people to consider. Um, and certainly something that with the data we provide at Altmetric, we try and make sure we always surface the underlying mentions, et cetera, so you can understand why something is getting attention. Uh, we've had a couple of questions in, but I'll leave those until the end. Uh, other Mike, I'm going to hand over to you now uh, for your section on book metadata. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Let me go into uh, presentation mode. Yep. Okay, Kat, you should be able to see my screen properly, I hope. Yeah, looks good. Cool, cool, cool. Excellent. Wonderful. So, my name is Mike Taylor. I'm Head of Metrics Development at Digital Science, which mostly means that I'm working on either Dimensions or Altmetric. Um, but a year ago, I was working with some external publishers on a white paper on open monographs and the interest um, the interest that the community has uh, has shown in in the research that we've done in, on the state of book publishing has uh, led us to spin up a new blog series um, on a, a new digital science blog series on some of the issues about books and actually I've done, I've done a couple of podcasts as well so we're really trying to um, support the development of the book as a scholarly um, as a scholarly channel of communication and for me this is particularly important because I I worked at a publisher for for 20 years um, for most of that time I was working in books working in book publishing so for me it's a very it's a it's a personal mission as well that we ensure that, that book publishers book authors are supported to establish books as um, in the in the modern connected world as a, as a first class research output. You know, we know that books are that important, but they're not necessarily um, being treated by by um, the, the technology infrastructure as, as as a first class research output. So I worked on one of our blog posts with Jennifer Kemp, who's um, uh, uh, who works at Crossref, the people who make digital object identifiers and who manage very much of the metadata for journal articles. You know, they, they handled several million um, journal articles a year and a few tens of thousands of books and chapters. So we wrote this blog post and what we're arguing for is an increase in the amount of metadata that book publishers provide at a chapter level. Books are enormous documents, and you know when you're looking, for, when you're using a tool like Mendeley that Mike Mike Thiel was just talking about, or our own dimensions, when you're searching um, in those kind of catalogs, being able to locate individual chapters is a real strength to both the authors and also the individuals. So please do dip into the link and have a look at the website. So Jennifer and I were looking at reasons why we want to be putting chapters, chapter metadata out there. So it starts to, the, the best way of understanding the situation is to have a quick look at the number of, the percentage of books that currently have chapter metadata. So we made an estimation last year for that white paper that I mentioned on books, on the number of books that are published per year, number of academic books published. So monographs, collected works, not including textbooks, just to sort of really drive that home, monographs and collected works, academic academic books. And what we're, what we're estimating is that about a third of books, maybe a little bit higher, a third of books have, have um, have a, a digital object identifiers associated with them. So not quite a majority of books being handled 
um, having their metadata through Crossref. Ma the majority of books simply have an ISBN. And they don't expose chapter information at all at any level whatsoever. Of the books that do have chapter level chapter data, we're thinking that it's probably about a third of books all over that have chapter data being expanded. So when you go to a Mendeley, when you go to a Dimensions, you know, when you go to any one of these um, standard um, academic search engines, you can do a search and you'll find chapters and the authors coming up in your search results. You can choose to choose to access them or not. But at the moment, you know, books are clearly underrepresented. About a third have digital object identifiers, but only a quarter of the sum total of those have chapters as well. So the, the work that Jennifer and I have been doing and supporting doing is to produce reasons why book publishers should be making their chapter metadata available. And our blog post discusses seven articles. And I'm not going to go into each one of those in depth because we don't have the time. Um, but I'm just going to go through them one by one. So the first one, increased discoverability, which I've already alluded to. Making chapter information available through Crossref means that your chapters, the inside of your books, are going to be showing up when students and researchers are doing searches. And this is all the more important because over the past 20 years, we have seen a steady migration from the traditional discovery tools that are located in academic libraries to being more general tools, more general purpose tools, to less focusing on, on the book index, more generally the search engine approach. So getting the metadata out there on a chapter level, vitally important. Secondly, the fact that the metadata is out there and that people can see that the chapter exists will increase the visibility of the book and consequently, you'll get more people coming to use that book. Thirdly, and this is a really important thing, the the authors are now people who are also using these general purpose platforms. They expect their chapters to be available. They don't expect them to be hidden away in the stacks in an academic library or, or, or virtually on a server somewhere. They expect to see the chapters being pushed out there. And a lot of the pressure that we're getting is from, is based, a lot of the pressure we're hearing is coming from the authors. And this is all the more important when we think about open access where the customer, the author, is essentially paying for the publishing process to, to occur. So author exposure then really is seriously important. You know, very often the case is that a, the, the book editor of a collected work will be getting, getting their name out there underneath the title and the subtitle in the metadata, but the people who write the chapters, the people who are contributing the chapters just disappear if we don't make the chapter data available. My fifth reason, as I coming down, coming down the turnpike towards the end, is as Mike was talking about the usage and the citations reporting, meaning having those DOIs available, registering your chapters with Crossref means that people like Altmetric, people like Dimensions, and other people as well, immediately start looking for your your content. They will immediately start reporting that data. It reduces the cost of having to set up. Um, data feeds in order to make these things, make this data available. Sixth, harking back to the open access thing, your authors, the people who are coming to you and increasingly paying book publishing fees to have their books made open access, they need to show their funders, they need to show their institutions that those are open access, particularly when we're thinking about edited, um, edited um, works where there may be 40 or 50 chapters we need to be able to the academics who've got the fun have got the funds and the mandates from the institutions they need to be able to see those are open access and there are many services out there that use the crossref doi they use other data feeds to join them together to make it really easy for funders and institutions to make sure that those chapters they paid for have been made open access so this just makes it whole much, much easier, much simpler for us to be, as, as, as people in the publishing world, to be compliant with open access mandates. And seventh, which is absolutely my favorite, is understanding the hot topics in your books. And it is something that you can absolutely see in Altmetric. 
um, I've been doing a, se uh, a series of workshops with book publishers to to go into the altmetric data to show you how to expose the insights of the data so that you can translate the knowledge in um, in in altmetric directly to your business as a books publisher. And one of the things that I absolutely adore doing is when you have the opportunity to look at the altmetrics on a chapter level and you can see different numbers of Mendeley reasons, you can see meet readers, you can see different numbers of tweets, you can see um, the hot topics within the book. So you get an insight into how your book is performing in a way that I would have just loved when I was commissioning books, being able to see what your authors are excited, uh, sorry, what your what your readers are excited about and wanting to read more about and to tweet about and discuss is absolute a, a gift to a commissioning editor. So my final slide before I call it a day is a really positive one because it's getting much easier to do chapter level um, metadata. If you were think, you know, if you if you looked at this ten years ago, and I know many of us did, and I was in, I was one of those. It was really expensive. It was slow. It was confused. There were many different ways of doing it. It's so much easier now. We've got a new Onyx standard coming out. We've got Crossref and ISBN becoming more interchangeable, and and hopefully we're going to see people like the uh, the Onyx um, Onyx data providers increasingly able to take chapter level data as well as published DOIs. So thank you very much for that. Um, and I'm just gonna take you back to my link. There it is, please go and visit, have a read and let me know what you think. If there is an eighth reason or a ninth reason, we wanna hear about it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mike. Um, and thanks for the, the quick summary of the blog post there. I think some really important things for publishers to go away and think about. Um, to tie that to uh, the tracking that Mike Thelwell mentioned previously, um, within Altmetric, we uh, kind of need to know about where you publish your books to be able to track them. Um, so if you tell us the domain that you host your books on, we would add that to our whitelist. Um, then we, if you want us to track it and show it as a book type and you have, say, ISBNs, we'll build a special module to do that. Um, we do sometimes pick up mentions for books that only have DOIs if we're tracking the domain and they just appear in our system as an article content type. Um, so it depends whether you want them to be serviced as, surfaced as books or as something else. Um, but essentially we need to know where the content lives, we need to have the identifier meta tags so that we can identify which, which publication it is um, and then our system will automatically pick up the mentions. Uh, we've had a couple of other questions in that I would like to put to you both actually, Mike and Mike. Uh, one is kind of more broadly, so uh, Giovanna asks, how can we complement the story beyond quantitative indicators? Um, she suggests maybe with case studies or interviews with stakeholders. Do either of you kind of have experience of doing something like that or what would you perhaps suggest there? Yeah, I can certainly talk to that, but Mike, if you if you have anything, please, please jump in. Okay, well, just... Uh... Briefly, I, I guess it, uh, this is really a tricky one and it depends on the scope of the assessment. So uh, um, so if it's a, a big important assessment, then talking to stakeholders sounds fantastic. Talking to the authors um, and looking for lots of different sources of, of information so that the, the, the old metric scores just form one part of the, the full narrative. But I, I think it's not it's not a one size fits all uh, scenario is something that needs to be tailored to the each individual evaluation. Yeah, I, I would um, completely agree with that. Obviously, uh, one of the things that I've been doing over the last couple of years is to do topic-based analyses, which are essentially small case studies um, of the work that's been going on in an area, and. Because I have a background in the humanities I, I, and social sciences, that's where that's where I'm, I'm naturally drawn to. And you do get much more complex um, inter intertwining of books and journals and other forms of data. And it can be really interesting to see how the discourse, uh, how the location of discourse um, changes over time. So, for example, in fact, next week I've got a blog post on the Me Too phenomena coming out, the the the, the, the cytometrics of the Me Too phenomena, and there you can see 
through using altmetric data and looking at the the research that um, that people have been doing over the last few years, you can really see how the focus of um, the focus of dialogue has changed over the last few years. So as well as the volume, the the location, if you like, the the means that people are using to talk about research shifts. That's a that gives us a really interesting site, and I think that it acts as a as a key to unlock a route into the to writing a case study to writing the writing the case because you know once you've got that data in front of you you can use it as an indicator of where you need to be looking thanks both i think some great ideas there that hopefully um giovanna can use to to put that into practice um mike Felwell, a more technical question for you here um related to your research work do you have any time course data on citation accumulation on books, um, particularly field specific citations? So, for example, what's the median age of book content that is cited in medicine versus history? Oh, that's an easy one to answer. No, I don't have anything about that. Um, I'm not sure I've seen that kind of data. But this might be another Mike question. Other Mike, have you seen this kind of data? No, I haven't. Um, I've seen that kind of data, and it is it's 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 relatively straightforward to to access and to compute. I haven't done that. Um, so in dimensions, if I sorry, I know this is an altmetric webinar, but I'm with my other hat on, with my dimensions hat on. Um, so we have we index all books with DOIs, which is um, as you can as you saw from my pie chart, about a third of the academic output. It's probably the biggest database of books and we do get citations appearing relatively quickly now what we haven't done is to use that data to publish an academic article and i th i'm thinking that we probably need to add that onto um onto the list of things to be done it's definitely going faster that's one of the things which is interesting okay thanks for your thoughts on that um Jen has asked how are all metrics different than publicity tracking services and companies like Meltwater and Incision. Um, I can give an answer to that and then Mike and Mike if you've got anything to, to add feel free to do so. Um, so Jen has actually the biggest difference really is in the way the tracking works so um, as well as the, the attention sources actually. Um, so with something like Meltwater for example you put in say an author name or a keyword and it goes out almost like Google and it looks in all the news sources or perhaps some social media sources as well that, that they work with um, and pulls back the things that it can find related to that keyword. So what you end up with is a very broad set of data um, that often in my experience takes a lot of cleaning to sort through to figure out exactly what's been talked about and whether it's really the thing that you're after. With Altmetric, what we do is take a slightly different approach. So we're tracking all of our attention sources. So that's news, blogs, social media, patents, policy, open syllabi, like I mentioned. Um, and we look in those sources for links that go to either the Google Books page for the book, the Amazon page for the book, or the publisher page for the book, or indeed like an institutional repository if, if we have it on our whitelist. And then we follow those links to that page and when we get to the page we figure out exactly which book they're talking about so what you end up with actually is a very specific set of data that doesn't require the same level of cleaning that directly links the attention to a specific book um, our sources lists are curated so for example news and blogs we add each site manually um, so it's not as comprehensive as google um, and our system really gives you that accuracy so you can be confident that the data you're looking at is about the book that you were intending to look at um, rather than having to sift through it all. Mike and Mike, any, anything to add to that? I don't know if you've got any experience. No, okay. that was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Um, let's see, are authors dependent on publishers for getting DOIs for chapters? I would have thought it depends on the publisher and in what sense they want to use the DOI because I suppose potentially do you think you could just take your chapter and go off and register it yourself and get a DOI for it? That's a really really good question um, and people do do things for example like loading them onto ResearchGate which will give them which will give them DOIs um, that doesn't necessarily help because unfortunately the, the, the joined up metadata on the back means that to some extent 
analytical systems are going to lose the lose the um, lose the visibility of that. But that said, I mean, you could do it. What it won't do, unfortunately, is to do anything other than tell you about the impact of the document that's on ResearchGate, for example. It won't tell you about it, you know, in any of the library systems, which a more official DOI would do that. I think that one of the important things that we need to be doing here is, you know, if we're working with a publisher who doesn't do chapter level metadata, is to support them to do that. And, you know, fortunately, the systems are in place. People want this to happen. Places like Crossref are extremely enthusiastic. They will always be happy to take a, take a message or a call from anyone who is trying to do this kind of work. Um, it, one of the things that's a little bit sad from a personal perspective is that most of the publishers who have gone to chapter level metadata did so a few years ago. So there was a big jump a few years ago and it was largely along the, the big commercial publishers. And I'm not going to name names because we all know who they are. It's actually the small academic um, independent publishers who haven't managed to embrace this yet. And I know how expensive, I know how you know intimidating and expensive this is. I live in Oxford. I'm surrounded by small academic publishers. Um, I did help uh, two of my neighbours who run a small academic publishing company to go to chapter level DOIs um, uh, uh, about a year and a half ago. And I know it takes about 40 minutes per book to do it. You know, they've got the information in the spreadsheet and, you know, they just run it out and upload it to Crossref. And it's meant that they can um, tell, have all their books and chapters in, in all the different discovery engines, dimensions, plus others, others as well. Um, and it means that it's so much easier for them to get hold of data and to report them, report that data back to, back to the authors. So I'm now, I would say, you know, we all need to say that we need this. We faced exactly the same problem with ORCID 10 years ago, where everybody was sort of like looking and thinking, do we want to do this? And it actually took the, the, the voice of the community to really speak up and to, to drive the need for this home. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I think if, you, if you're a champion of uh, DOIs for chapters and for books, please do push ahead and, and do what you can to, to raise the voice of the community there. Uh, a couple of uh, source and, and or metric more technical questions that I'll just cover quickly in our last few minutes. Um, so a couple of people asking about different sources, one in particular is book reviews. Um, at the moment, all metric data includes a select number of book reviews from newspapers that we were tracking as a news source, but they also publish some book reviews. So we've done some work to split those out and incorporate them into the system. Uh, we're also exploring working with lots of new book review sources um, with each kind of third party source that we want to pull data from. You can imagine we have to go through quite extensive conversations with them about how we want to use the data and any costs involved, etc. So that's an area that we are looking to expand. Uh, someone asked if author name is a reporting category for all metrics for books. Within our Explorer platform, you can search by keyword. So you could put the um, author name in as a keyword. The results wouldn't be as accurate as searching by the book title or the book identifier, um, but that would be one way to gather that data. Uh, and then lastly, something that we know a lot of publishers are keen to do, how do we implement this sort of metric data in email campaigns? So when we're emailing authors about the success and impact of their book after publication, um, we can make that process as efficient as possible. There's a couple of potential things here. Uh, one, of course, is that you can just copy and paste the, the donut image, if that's what you want to use, um, into your email, and then you could link out to, for example, the Altmetric Details page. Uh, the second way, I would say, is that we provide an API, um, which you could work with your technical teams to integrate into your email system, so that those badges or whatever data you wanted to show populated automatically. Happy to talk more about that though. Um, it probably requires a case by case conversation. I'm gonna stop there because we're at four o'clock and I'm sure you've all got busy days. Uh, thank you so much everyone for joining and thank you very much to Mike and Mike for your really interesting presentations. Oh, my pleasure, like thank I, you very much. Like I said at the beginning, we will share the slides and the recording round um, and do feel free to get in touch with us if you have follow up questions or would like more information. So thanks everyone and we'll say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.